Ukraine says Russia's billion-dollar defense system crumbling against U.S. MRs. A top Ukrainian official has claimed that Russia's most advanced S-400 air defense system is unable to intercept rockets fired by the American-made M-142 MRs Multiple Launch Rocket System, MLRS. Anton Gashenko, the advisor to the Minister of Internal Affairs of Ukraine, said in a tweet on July 11 that Russian S-400 anti-aircraft defense systems cannot intercept Mars rockets. Gashenko did not provide any specifics relating to the failure of the S-400 system against the Hamars rockets. Still, he said, Russian armed forces, their ammunition and fuel warehouses are unprotected from the power of American weapons. Gashenko possibly referred to the series of Ukrainian attacks in recent days on several Russian arms depots in Donetsk, Lysikansk, and Kherson, etc., using the Hamars MLRS system provided by the U.S. Shortly before Gashenko made his claims, a Ukrainian portal reported that the S-400 could not shoot down a single Amars rocket either in Donbass, Zaporizhia, or Kherson regions. Sensor.net reported that during an attack on a Russian military facility in Kartsysk in Donetsk, a Hamars rocket even destroyed the S-400 complex. So far, there is no documented instance of the S-400 system deployed in Ukraine. In April, the Russian Defense Ministry claimed to have used its S-400 system to knock down a Ukrainian Mi-8 helicopter, 30 kilometers inside Ukraine's Chernihiv region, close to the border with Russia. Nevertheless, the Hamars system has indeed come bearing gifts for Ukraine. In recent days Ukrainian forces have destroyed more than a dozen major Russian ammunition stockpiles and supplies using Hamars rockets. The effectiveness of Amars on the battlefield has made the pro-Kremlin figures so nervous that they have publicly voiced their concerns. For example, a former commander of Russian separatist forces in eastern Ukraine, Igor Gherkin, said on July 10 on the Telegram messaging app that the Russian air defense systems, which relatively, very relatively, coped with attacks with the help of Tocheku and Uraganov, turned out to be ineffective against massive strikes by HIMARS, HIMARS missiles. More than 20 Russian ammunition depots in the Donbass region and Ukraine's south, including some of the largest, have come under Ukrainian attacks, with some destroyed, according to Ilya Ponomarenko, the defense and security reporter at the Kyiv Independent. This recent wave of Ukrainian attacks has made the Russian forces feel the crunch in terms of munitions fueling Russia's artillery dominance in Donbass until now. A Russian military bogger Andrei Morozov, also known as MERS, was cited by Ponomarenko as saying that Russian troops were facing growing munitions hunger, as the number of 122 and 152 mm rounds are depleting due to recent Ukrainian attacks. There have also been some eyewitness accounts, such as from Roman Sapankov, another Russian military blogger who was embedded with frontline Russian forces and was present during a Hamars strike on Chernobyvka, Kherson, on July 9 which made quite an impression on him. As it happened yesterday, I watched the Hamars strike on Chernobyvka, Kherson, almost before our eyes. I have been under fire many times, but I was struck that the package, five or six missiles, landed almost into a penny. Usually, MLRS fall over large areas and at maximum distance scatter in a fan-like manner, Sapankov said on July 10 in a Telegram post. It is clear that this is just the beginning. They will hammer on Kherson and other border towns. Belgorod in particular. They will cover all checkpoints and military facilities, data on which have been collected over the past four months, Sapankov continued. However, as of now, the U.S. has forbidden Ukraine to use Amars for strikes inside Russia. Therefore, it is unlikely that Amars rockets would soon rain in on Belgorod. So far, Ukraine has received eight Amars units, with four more expected to arrive in the country by the end of July. Russian army missing long-range artillery capabilities facing Ukrainian MRs. Russian troops continue using precision-guided weapons against military facilities of the Ukrainian army. However, Russian precision-guided weapons are no longer capable of changing the course of the special military operation in Ukraine. Long-range artillery and air defense missile systems, satellite reconnaissance data should be used more actively, military expert Oleg Falashev writes in the Independent Military Review. Now the tactical pause is ending on the front lines, Falashev says. According to him, the pause in operations began two weeks ago and was necessary to redeploy reserves, weapons and ammunition to the tactical theater and reman battalion task forces and military units. Also, it was necessary to carry out military personnel rotation. 
According to the expert, the inspection of the Russian troops involved in the special military operation in Ukraine by Defense Minister Sergei Shoigu in mid-July also testifies to a pause in operations. During the visit, he heard reports delivered by the Army Group commanders, instructed them to prevent missile and artillery strikes by the Ukrainian Army and to enhance the effectiveness of the destruction of Ukrainian drones. In the Donetsk area, Russian troops have almost reached the kromatorsk slavyansk line, the expert says. According to Falashev, there will be heavy fighting for Slavyansk and Kramatorsk, especially considering that Slavyansk is located on a hill, and it will be extremely difficult to make a frontal attack. This will require thinking through ways to bypass and maneuver. Falashev supposes that this issue was also on the agenda during a meeting between Defense Minister Sergei Shoigu and General Staff Chief Valery Gerasimov. As Falashev says, the American Institute for the Study of War, which has been monitoring the current situation in Ukraine, has also announced the end of the operational pause. According to him, it is necessary to increase the number of drones on the contact line and more actively use the military satellite constellation. Another problem is that the defense line of the Ukrainian troops between Seversk and Soldar has a chain of powerful fortifications, Falashev notes. Most of the artillery systems operational with the Russian army, such as 152mm D-20 towed howitzers, 122mm D-30 howitzers, Akatsiya and Gvozdika self-propelled systems, have a range of 15 to 17 kilometers. This range does not allow hitting the enemy's deep targets, the expert notes. The firing positions of M777A2 howitzers, Caesar, PZH-2000, Archer and Crab systems of the Ukrainian army are deployed at a distance of 27 to 37 kilometers from our positions. Long-range artillery systems, such as giant Sintby howitzers and 2S3 Pion self-propelled guns, are being used sporadically. Vladimir Putin faces economic oblivion as fears Russia's war dead total passes 40,000. Russia's economy is heading for oblivion as a result of punitive economic sanctions imposed by the West in the wake of Vladimir Putin's invasion of Ukraine, a damning report has indicated. The publication of Yale University research came on the same day Ukraine claimed the number of Russian war dead has now passed 40,000, in what would be a stark illustration of the human cost of Putin's war. The stark insights are contained in a new paper entitled Business Retreats and Sanctions Are Crippling the Russian Economy, published by the Yale Chief Executive Leadership Institute and authored by a team of experts including the think tank's founder, Jeffrey Asanenfeld. Ukrainian presidential advisor Alexei Arestovich said he believed fighting in and around the east, away from areas such as Kharkiv, would not determine the outcome of the war. He said, the idea is to put military pressure on us in Kharkiv, Donetsk and Luhansk over the next few weeks, what is happening in the east is not what will determine the outcome of the war. It makes the drone strike just south of Kharkiv a particularly devastating blow for Russian forces as Ukraine continues to have success in the most pivotal areas of conflict, forcing Russia to try to maintain their offensive with a dwindling source of military equipment.